All right, hi everybody. It looks like we are live. Today I'm doing kind of a live stream, but I want it to live on as a video. So if you're here after the live stream watching this video, I really hope you enjoy it. And I'm going to move as quick as I can and make this be a great video, hopefully. So a year ago, I think, or two, one and a half years ago by now, time is going by really fast right now, but I released my line with Ranger and we released my line of Simon Hurley Create Ink Pads, which I am so excited about and I know lots of you guys absolutely love them as well. I've made a video in the past sharing lots of different ways to use these ink pads because they really are an all-encompassing ink pad, at least for what I do. They stamp really beautifully, they blend absolutely effortlessly, and they watercolor down and do some really great techniques. And so today I'm going to update that video and walk you through even more techniques and even more things that these ink pads can do because I gotta be honest, as I continue to use them, I learn more and more about these inks each day, which is something I gotta admit, right? It's really awesome because we formulated these especially with a chemist at Ranger. There's no other ink pad like this one. The, ink, the Ranger ink pads are all separate formulations. I know some people like to speculate that we use the same thing for all of them. It's very much not. We go in with the chemist, which is really special, and we get to create an ink that we really love. And in fact, these inks we actually changed right before they launched at Creativation, right before they went into manufacturing. I changed one more thing to make sure they blend even better than they were. Um, so let's get into this. Let's get started. I see lots of you guys in here. I am so incredibly excited to share some techniques with my ink pads. So I'm going to turn down to my desk here. Let me click the desk. And I want to first start off by sharing the difference between my cardstock and other cardstocks. This is a cardstock that I used to use before I had my cardstock. And mind you, when I was choosing my cardstock, I went through 90 or 100 card stocks before I found the one that I absolutely loved. And I know what a lot of people are going to ask, is it similar to Nina? It is similar to the Nina Stark White, or the Nina, what do they call it? Classic Crest? Um, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. But I know a lot of people use that card stock. This is a similar card stock, but I found that this takes water a little bit better. It is even a little bit brighter than that as well. Um, so that's kind of the difference between that. But this is a card stock that was a lot cheaper that I was using beforehand. You can already see the difference in whiteness. This one's got a little bit more of a yellow tinge, whereas this one is super bright, stark white, right? And a lot of people ask me, how do you get such vibrant colors? How do you build up your color so much and get such cool effects on your cards? And it really comes down to having a really great quality ink, right? And I'll show that in just a second. But it also comes down to having a really amazing quality cardstock. And so the Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock is going to be really great for ink blending and lots of other techniques too. Um, so let me share the other cardstock first. Okay, so I'm going to grab my Prom Queen ink pad to share this. This is kind of the one that I've been using a lot, but I just find since it's a nice dark, vibrant color, it's a really great one to use to show off the differences. Someone says that um, they are having a hard time ordering the stuff from Ranger, and Ranger will restock usually almost every single day. Um, so that's, you'll kind of have to keep checking back to make sure things are in stock. And so I'm going to go in on my surface of my cardstock and start blending. And you'll see that the inks have, the inks have no problem blending on this cardstock, right? They actually blend out really well. And so no matter what cardstock you have, you will get a really nice blend because you have a great quality ink on hand. The only one thing that I don't love about using this cardstock is if I try to layer up this ink and get an even darker color than I had, it's not really going to layer. And also, look, it's not completely dry. So if I put my finger in it, it's going to give you fingerprints, which I don't love. I know a lot of people halfway through a background will get fingerprints. This is the reason why. It's because your ink isn't sinking into the surface of your cardstock. So let me go into my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock. Now I'm going to go into here and just start my ink blending. You can already see the color is very vibrant and saturated. Now, if there's any harsh marks, you might have seen a little harsh mark at the beginning there. Those tend to blend out with my inks. I don't know what it is about them. They kind of have a smoothing property. So as I continue to do that blending motion, it's going to smooth out any harsh marks and give you a really nice blend out into the white color. 
Now let me leave this on screen so you can already see the difference. This one's already darker because the ink is sinking into the surface, but let's say I want to layer it up and create an even darker color. I'll go in here, just add more color down, and look at that, right? So you get a much darker, more saturated color. If I dip my finger in this, no way, right? No fingerprint. It's not going to transfer. You're not going to get a lifted color like I did over here um, because it's sinking into the cardstock really nicely. So that is the main difference between my cardstock. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions. Does the stark white cardstock work with Copics or acrylics or anything like that? Lots of people have been using it for a variety of different things and have told me great results with all of them, which is really awesome. And it's a very thick 110 pound cardstock too, so it's gonna be a great weight for your cards. So that's the difference between cardstocks. You wanna make sure you pair up your great quality cardstock with your great quality ink so you get great effects. It also just kind of gives you more of a variety of looks you can get. It allows you to get more out of your ink pad, shall I say, because you can get a lighter color if you want to, like this one, but you can also build it up to get a darker color. Whereas I find if I try building this one up, it really doesn't change, which is weird. <laughs> so that is my start to the whole spiel with my inks. I didn't really go into that when I first made the video, and that's a very important thing to know when you're doing ink blending and doing inky techniques to get the best results. All right, so let me clean off my surface here. Hi everyone, I'm going to kind of chat with you guys as I'm doing things like this. Lots of people have said they've ordered the inks and love it. Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. All right, so now let's go into different techniques. Let me start off with my ink blending. That's something that I just shared, um, but I want to share a little bit more because this is another thing that we discovered. So one of the things that we discovered while we were kind of creating with these inks this year, or while I was creating with them. At Creativation, I was sitting down doing some ink blended backgrounds right before we were about to start the day. And our product manager, Kathy, came up to me and she was like, you know what's weird is I'll go in with pinks, oranges, and reds, and those blend beautifully. And I'll go in with blues and greens, and those blend beautifully. But Simon, you seem to go in with whatever colors you want, and they seem to always work, which is weird. And I was like, you know, that is really weird because I tend to go in with reds and greens, which shouldn't blend and purples and greens, which shouldn't blend. And they tend to blend together and don't create too much mud, which is really awesome. So that's one thing with my inks that I really love. They might create a bad color every once in a blue moon, but I find that when I mix different colors together that might not usually go together, it tends to create a beautiful blend either way, which is really awesome. So if you're not great with color wheel or color theory, these are great inks for you. So let me turn down to my color, or let me turn down to my surface here, and let's go in. Again, this is a piece of stark white cardstock. The stark white cardstock actually comes in a pack of eight and a half by 11, um, 10 sheets, and you can cut it down to whatever size you want. You can also buy my cardstock in packs of 50 on ranger.com. So they bundled five of these packs together so you can get a lot more in one um, pack, which is awesome. All right, so I'm going in here and blending, and like I said, any harsh marks you might get at the beginning, they're going to kind of disappear as you continue blending. So look, a little harsh mark there, but as you keep kind of blending out that color and softening things out, it's just going to blend it and smooth it on your cardstock, which I love. All right, so I usually tend to add colors on three at a time. And I'm not going to worry too much about blending it out into white because we're going in with other colors and it's going to smooth out either way because of that. Okay, next I'm going to go in with a little bit of Guppy. And this is a color that's going to blend with the Prom Queen absolutely beautifully. Right, so I'm going to go in here right next to that Prom Queen. And these are translucent dye-based inks. So you see right in between there, they create a, such a beautiful blend. And one thing with my inks that I wanted to make sure is that you didn't have to have a specific technique when you're blending, right? Because a lot of other inks on the market, it's like, okay, you have to start off the cardstock and then go on. Whereas really with these, if I wanted to start right in the center, I can, and it's gonna give me a great blend no matter what. Look, no harsh marks, and I started that right in the center of my cardstock. So that's one thing I wanted to really make sure is that you weren't really gonna have to focus on, you know, am I using my blending tool correctly? Because it's going to blend no matter what. 
All right, so once I'm done with that, let's go in with the color that might not usually blend with this beautifully. So let me see, a color that's not gonna blend. Let's go in with, I'll do a little bit of green because although pink and green are complementary colors and they're gonna look great together, if you overlap them and create a color in between, they might not create such a beautiful color, right? So I'm going in with Overzealous. And let's bring this pink and green together over here. And so look, that blends together effortlessly. Did it create such a beautiful color in between there? Hmm, not really, but it blended together and it doesn't create something icky, right? It just creates kind of a mixed color in between there, right? It's not like super dark brown, which is something that I really love about these inks. That's one of my favorite things, right? Because I create backgrounds all the time and I encourage you guys to just play around with your colors and have fun with them. So look, just creates a nice blend in between there. So that's one of my favorite things about these because I like to encourage people, you know, create whatever you want, create however you want and use whatever colors you want. You don't have to use the same colors I am to get a beautiful blend and see, you can kind of use whatever colors you want and mix them together to get such an awesome blend in the end. And if you get a result you don't like, there's always another side, but usually I find I love what I'm creating, even if I use kind of colors that aren't supposed to blend. So then let's finish it off. Let's go in with a little bit of triple berry. I love this color. Okay. So I'll bring some triple berry into this corner. And again, guys, green and purple, they're not supposed to blend either. But I'm just gonna go in here and blend that together. And see, it doesn't, it doesn't create a nasty color, which I love. But yes, of course, if you want to kind of know your color theory and make sure you're not going in with any colors that are going to make kind of a nasty color and just get really beautiful blends, you totally can do that too. And then let's go in with, let's do a little bit of blue. Actually, I'm going to go in with, this is one of my favorite colors. It's minty fresh. This one is super awesome color. It's kind of this greenish, bluish, slate gray kind of color. It's a weird one. It doesn't really know what it is and I loved it when I released it. It's kind of like this this cool neutral. I love it. So I'm just adding that in here. And again, does it usually go around with these colors? Hmm, maybe not, but I kind of love how it looks in here. This one kind of brings a neutral to the party, which I love. Awesome. Okay. So once I'm done with that, let's show you guys how to add water to it. Okay. Sorry guys, I'm not looking at the comments too much. Okay. Yeah, let's not say where I live. <laughs> Let me just go in here. All right. Yeah, let me add, hey Belinda, can you be my moderator? I'm gonna add you in there and I'll add you to that so you can make sure that nobody's leaving any strange comments. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, so here is that beautiful background once it's all complete. I love how that one looks and super bright colors, which is so awesome. Okay, so now let's go in and add some water onto this background. Sorry, now I'm a little distracted. Okay, so I'm going to use do, uh, school scribbles to do this, to add some water in here as I'm stamping, which I absolutely love the look of once it's all complete because it really makes your background kind of come to life. So let me go in here with the school scribbles background stamp, and I'm just going to go in here and spray this down. Okay, so I'm going to add the water down there, and I like to spray kind of sideways like this over top of my stamp because it's going to cover the whole thing really nicely and get a great cover of ink. So I'm going to take my inked background and I'm just going to place this onto the card. Give it some good pressure all around. And then I'll lift it off. And there you get this color lifting so beautifully, right? So you get that kind of shadowed look. Now let's say, let's say I want that to stop bleeding and blending.
I'm just going to go in and heat set this. And by heat setting it, it's going to make sure that it stops the color from really bleeding and blending all over my surface, and it's gonna keep the detail of this stamp in. Now, of course, if you want to keep a more detailed image, add a little bit less water, right? But if you want kind of this more image that's spread out and more watercolor-like, you can totally add lots of water to the surface like this. So I love how this background looks. So my inks react really beautifully with water. That's why we added this kind of watercolor smudge there in a lighter color so that that's kind of the color you're going to get when you add water to the surface. So you get almost two colors in there, which I think is super great. Yeah, I'm not looking too much at the comments. I am kind of reading them, but um, this way I'm going to get this video out nice and quick because I'm working on drawing some stamps for my next release and didn't have tons of time to edit the video, but I wanted to give you guys lots of information in one video. So that's one really, really great way to add water to your background. Now let's say I wanted to get any excess color off of there. You could totally go in here and just kind of stamp that down and that's going to lift up and give you kind of a more subtle background with those same colors. So I really love how that one looks too. Now let me show you another thing you could do with water when you're stamping to get a really great watercolor effect. I'm going to clean off this stamp. And another great feature of my ink pads is that they clean off super easily, right? So they're water-based. So all I had to do was just spray a little water down and I go in with this little rag, which is very well loved. And I just kind of wipe it off and it cleans perfectly. So I love that. My ink pads are sold at Ranger and scrapbook.com and lots of other littler kind of boutique stores. So ask your local scrapbook store, but also there's a link down below in the description box where you can go shopping for my ink pads, which is awesome. Yes, I'm working for the actually next year's release. So we're a little bit ahead, which is awesome. So I'm going to go in for this watercolor technique and let's use this background stamp. I haven't used this one in a while and I love how it looks. So this one's called Piano Recital, and this is one of those peel apart background stamps. But for this, I'm just gonna show you kind of a fun watercolor technique. So let me go in and I'm gonna go in with a couple different colors here. I'll pick some of my favorites. Okay, let's go in with these three. So I'm gonna use a Prom Queen Clear Skies and Crown Me, and I'm gonna show you how to do some watercolor stamping. So instead of adding the water down once this whole thing is finished, right, and lifting off the color, I'm going to show you how to get this cool watercolor effect. So it looks like you've like painted these, which is super cool. So then I'll go in with a little bit of clear skies. Okay. And then I'll go in with a little bit of crown meat to finish it off. So I'll just go in here. And I just use the corner of my ink pad. I find that that really helps to get it in selective areas. Awesome. Yeah, you found some shops in Germany that carried the stuff and then you don't have to pay extra shipping. That's so awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna spray that down. And again, you can spray it as much or as little as you want to get the kind of result you want. And then I'm going to Go in here and stamp this down. Awesome. And so when I've done that, you can see this really beautiful watercolor look. And this looks just like I've painted it in, which I think is super cool. So you could either get this kind of stamped result where you get a lot of lighter colors by doing a second image here. I'm not gonna do that again, but you could totally do that if you want to or you could get that really great ink blended image and lift off the color. So there are so many different ways to get a cool watercolor background when using the inks with stamping. Awesome. So nope, they don't stain. All you do is just go in and you can clean it off really easily. My inks won't stain your stamps, which is really awesome. The ink that I do use that stains, because you'll see some of my clear stamps are stained, the ink that I use that stains is the Jet Black Archival ink, but it's a really nice waterproof ink, so I use it along with my inks. And I'll link this uh, after the stream, but you can find it on Ranger's site as well. It's a really awesome background stamp for my line.
Okay, so now let's go in and I'm going to share how to color in images with the ink, which I think is really an important technique. It's really a lot of fun to do and I do it on lots of different cards since there are so many different little critters in my line. And so one thing I recommend when coloring an image is, is to use watercolor cardstock. I know I've kind of talked a lot about my cardstock in today's video and how well it works with water. But when I'm doing any detailed coloring, I like to go in with watercolor cardstock because I find it doesn't take in the ink as quickly. So you get a lot more surface time to move around your color and play along with it. And it's also not going to bleed, which is really awesome. Yay, someone says they got the inks uh, in England and they're so excited and they love them. Thank you so much, that's so awesome to hear. Now another thing that you could do is color in some of our die cuts. This one is the Dude's Die Cuts Pack. It has 24 die cuts in here and there are two of each image, which is so much fun. So this coordinates along with the Dude's 2 stamp set, but if you don't like to cut out images or anything like this, this is perfect for you. So these are on a watercolor cardstock already. They're printed on the watercolor cardstock and I'm just going to grab one of the images to color in. So. Let me grab one of these little guys so we can color him in. And there's a couple different ways that you can go about doing this. Um, some of them I kind of figured out more recently, and some of them I have been doing since I started with the ink pads. So I'm going to spray down a little bit of water. I find that spraying down water on my surface gives me a little bit more control over my color. And then let's go in with a little bit of color here. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of my bee sting. And one thing you could do to kind of control your color is I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny little bit of water. You don't want to add too much because you don't want to add water to the formulation really. I'm just going to grab a little bit to kind of get the color to blend and go right onto the surface of my ink pad with my brush. And then I'll go in here and start my water coloring on the die cut. Now the reason I like to do this is because you get really solid color. So let's say you want some more solid shading on something. You could totally go in straight from your ink pad like this and you get a really great result in the end. I've been loving doing this because it gets you quick coloring. And if let's say you're on the go, you're at a crop or a retreat or something and you don't have any surface to put your inks on, this could be a really great way to color. The only thing I recommend is just don't add lots of water back into your ink pad, right? I'm going in with a little to no water on my brush and then going into color. That's something you're going to want to make sure, like here I have absolutely no color on my brush and that's just going to help lay down the color before I kind of blend it out like this. You don't want to add too much water back into your ink pad. And so I'll do the same thing here with Guppy. I'll just go in with a little bit of water and do some blending of that color. And look, it just blends in together beautifully, but it gives you that really solid color at the beginning, which I love. So if you're having trouble getting a really solid and vibrant color, try going in with almost a dry brush with just a little bit of water on it, and that's gonna give you some really great coloring effects. Yay, you just got the Dude's 2 stamp set. Yeah, these coordinate perfectly with it. They're the exact same size too, so you can use any of the images in the set to coordinate along with the images. Now, another thing that I want to encourage is Taking your ink, I'm going to do a little bit of over the moon and some gur, which is my brown color. This one's named after my pup, which I love. So I'm going to go in here and mix my colors. And so I would do this on a craft sheet. Here I'm working on a laminate surface. Lots of people ask. I prefer a craft sheet, but this looks better on camera for you guys. Now here I'm going in with a little bit of gur and mixing it with a lot of over the moon. And then I'm just going to go in and color this in. Okay. I'm just coloring this in. And the thing about this and adding them onto your desk is that you're able to really mix and blend your colors beautifully, which I think is awesome. And so that's one of the reasons why I love going on the desk. You can also add as much water as you want to the color to soften the color you know, anything like that. So that's one really big benefit of adding them right onto your desk is the different blending and color variations you can get by adding them onto your surface. Yay, that's awesome. Yeah, the um, 
the inks ship all over from Ranger and things like that. But if you don't want to pay as much shipping there, search up your, like what you're looking for, like Simon Hurley Create inks or just Simon Hurley Create, and then search up what area you're trying to find them in. Um, and that can kind of help as well. Hopefully that gives you a store that carries them online. Awesome. So this is a really great way to color in your images. So I love to encourage just going on your desk and bringing the color in because that's one of my favorite ways to do it. But I know some people don't love, you know, doing it on a craft sheet or don't have a surface like that. And so maybe going into your ink pad with a little bit less water is also another great option. Yay. Blanca says she wants all the inks. Thank you. Another option too, and I haven't really done this one too much, but I've seen other people do it with my inks, is to take it and like press it down. See, it doesn't sound great, but it does get a little bit of ink into your lid here. And then you can color that down. I don't recommend this version as much just because I don't want your ink pads broken and the seals to not be as tight. So I probably wouldn't recommend doing this, but I know some people have done it with their ink pads in the past and it does work. But I prefer just adding it down onto my surface and going in and coloring. And if you want a darker color, just don't add as much water to it and bring in the color a little bit darker then. So that is a really great way to color in your image and get some beautiful results. I'm not gonna waste your time here and by coloring in this whole thing, but there you go love how that looks and there's different ways you could do it of course like i said though one of my favorite ways is just adding them onto my surface on a craft sheet and then coloring them in now one last thing i wanted to share let me pull out a piece of cardstock here is stamping Stamping with the inks is really an important thing and I wanted to share that in today's video because I know lots of people ask about it because there are some inks on the market that are really great at watercoloring and different techniques but they might not be so amazing at stamping and trust me, I have a whole wall of inks off to my side. You guys have probably seen them. I was an ink addict before this um, but now that I came up with my own inks that can pretty much do everything, they're the only ink I really use besides archival ink, which is a permanent ink. Um, and so that's one thing I really love about them is that they're also great at stamping. So I'm gonna go in with the Road Trip stamp set. This is from my newest release and it's got some more solid images in here. And I'm going to show you guys some stamped images. So let me put these back in. Of course, somebody didn't do that pretty tight. <laughs> And then let's go in with some of the layers. So I'm going to choose the two layers of the palm tree. These are pretty solid images. I don't have too many solid images in my collection yet, um, but these two are pretty solid. Okay, so I'm going to go in with those and then let's do some stamping. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of gur first for the palm tree, for the base of the palm tree. And honestly, I haven't re-inked these in a while but I hope they still stamp beautifully for you guys. So let me stamp that down. Awesome, and look how solid that stamps. That's something that was super important to me. And in fact, this is one of the things that we changed right before we went into manufacturing because I was like, I want them to stamp so beautifully for all of you guys. I want them to be an ink you can use for all different kinds of things. So I'm gonna go in with Psych, which is my kind of yellowish green color. Another tip when using the ink pads is to put your finger in here, apply some pressure, and then add your ink down. And that's going to ensure that you get full coverage along the whole stamp. Oh, you put the ink on the acrylic block? That's a great idea. For when you're watercoloring, yeah, you can make a palette on here as well. And then I'll go in with some other colors to kind of shade it out. Here I'm going to use a little bit of Tropical Tango. And for this, I just kind of roll the color on and that is a great way of kind of blending and shading on here. And so then let's go in and stamp that down. Sorry, I just wanted to look over top to make sure I was stamping it in the right place. And look at that. So you really get a beautiful solid image no splotchiness to it, which I just love about these inks. So I love how many different things you could do with them, right? 
Awesome. Do they, do they, uh, are they at Michael's? No, not yet. You guys have to love them even more for them to get there. You got the small ink pad holder and you love it. Yay. Okay. So thank you guys so much for stopping and watching. I'm so glad you guys enjoy these ink pads as much as I do and all the things you could do with them, whether it is stamping or blending and lifting off color to create a really beautiful background, or whether it's stamping with watercolor techniques or, you know, different blending techniques. I just love the amazing things you can do with my ink, and I'm so glad you guys have shown them so much love and support as well. It really means the world to me. When I went into this, I didn't really know how to explain to you guys how different they were. It's kind of something where it's just like, you need to try out the ink pads for yourself to really see how different they are from the other inks on the market. I know the ink pad industry, or this releasing ink pads in the crafting world has been kind of a popular thing to do. And lots of those people use the same manufacturer and it is a similar formulation of ink. But at Ranger, we really go in with the chemist. We make sure that the inks are very different and tailored to exactly what we want to use them for. And so these are tailored perfectly for all my different techniques and stamping techniques for card making. And so now that you guys are getting your hands on them and absolutely loving them, it really makes me happy, it makes me excited because at first I was just like, you know, it's gonna sound like I'm just favor favoritizing my inks because they have my name on them, but really it's because we spent so much time making sure that they're perfect and that they do everything that I want them to. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I've done one of these in the past that's a little bit more um, condensed down, but it also doesn't share as much because I figured out a lot more about these inks in the last year. All right guys, yes, be sure to check out the replay. I'm really excited about them. Yay! There's lots of people in the comments too saying that they've tried out several of the ink pads and want to buy the whole collection because they love it and it's become a staple in their craft room. So thank you so much. It's become a staple in my craft room too. I am absolutely loving these and um, yeah. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Share this video with your friends if they need some new inks and you want them to see it as well. Um, and also leave me a comment down below if you guys have these inks, if you love them, what you plan on doing with them. I would love to chat with you guys down there. All right, everybody, I'll see you very, very soon. Yes, re-inkers are available. Everything, there's links down below to everything in the description box for all these inks. And I'll also link the stamps I used after this video is over. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you very, very soon for another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye. All right, now we gotta end it. <laughs>